This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Welcome. A very special light is coming down to the world in our days. We can see changes, big, wide changes in the world. The Creator is using the, um, all kinds of media to open the awareness, the minds of people to the importance and the existence of the Holy Nation of, of Israel and for sure that we must work on ourselves to be worthy for that important name and position as the nation that carries the, the most ancient source of of truth to reveal the loving kindness of the Creator to to the world and like that the Creator himself is asking us have I ever revealed myself like that in Matan Torah in the time that we received the Torah in front of hundreds of thousands of people that no one ever disagreed on the greatness of, of that time. There were no testaments of people that said, I didn't see it, I never, I, I, I wasn't there. Everyone agreed with one heart, everyone saw and testified. And even different religions like Christianity, like Islam, no one is questioning the Bible's truth. Everyone are at least confirming that it is true and being given to us by God. Later on, they found themselves drifting to, to different lanes, different ways and receiving different messages from the leaders that they chose for themselves and separated by that from our tradition, the ancient one. But for us, the main, main mission, main purpose of those holy days is to become worthy, to be those people that are being called by that holy name, Am Israel the Israel nation, nation of Israel. To be a real Israeli, Israeli, it's not to have a blue ID in Israel or to be called Jewish by your mother's religion. It's that your mindset will be dedicated straight to God, straight to Hashem. Yeshar El, straight to God. Israel, it's Yeshar El, straight to God. That your mindset is straight and simple. That you have only one purpose, to straight up yourself with God. Now, 
we know that the ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Rivka, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, they were all, and also their children, the holy tribes, they were all serving the Creator, committing themselves to Him before the time that we as a nation received the Torah. They were already committed to Him, body and heart, mind and soul, not to move from His will, always to follow His commandments, even before that He commanded us for anything. Our mind was straight and honest and pure, and that is the nature of all of those ones that finds that desire to follow the Creator based on faith. It's our nature. I grew up in a secular house with n barely any leftovers of tradition. And still my heart was a flame of fire to the Creator. And no one can explain how and why. Except of that it was already built in inside my heart, inside my heart, inside my mind, inside my, my nature. That there is a Creator and that I belong to Him and that He is a valuable, that He is a valuable? What? Valuable. To me. And that I can reach out to Him and to call Him before I even knew that there is something that calls Sidhu that you pray from. I was just calling Him and I was talking to Him as a child. And I know people that are not even Jewish in their religion and their heart is a flaming fire to the Creator and against all nature and all odds, they're just running into fields of thorns, swimming against the stream, just to find Him, just to be called under His name, just to seek for His presence, desiring Him with their heart in a way that we will all be embarrassed. And the hearts of those people, the converts and the Nahides and the real Jewish souls that are desiring the Creator, are showing by that nature that Hashem is one and He's true and He's here. Because you would never use some silly plastic device to communicate with someone in a different land if you wouldn't believe that you can communicate through that device, that you can really use that and it's a phone that people can speak through and buy. You wouldn't do something so silly like believe in something that is not real unless you felt it, unless you tasted it and you tasted that, oh that taste is good, it was satisfying me, I know what I'm talking about. Where do you know? The fact that you really know, that's the evidence that Hashem is here. The believer doesn't need no proofs and evidence for his faith because his faith is the proof for his life. He always sees more wonders and more miracles and more signs along the way. And every time he receives another message that completes the puzzle, that built and, 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 and completes the, the, the big picture. And he finds another clue and another understanding about himself. And he sees that all of that supervision is coming from one source that is keep on communicating and sharing and giving and un, un, unlocking 
its own beauty and releasing that knowledge that was hidden for so many years under those curtains of exile and darkness that we experienced. But today, our awakeness, the fact that we are coming out to the light from the darkness, and that light of tshuva is coming from within, because no one spoke with us about tshuva, no one convinced, someone asked me once, few, few people asked me, who, who, who made you to do tshuva, who convinced you to do tshuva? It's a joke. Hashem, what are you talking about? Who? I was not a person that will follow people. I never was a person like that. I was a rebel from, from age three. I was fighting. Since I learned how to walk, I was looking for the door. First of all, my name is Dror. Dror is a sparrow. I, I have wings. I'm born with wings. That's I like. I'm flying out of here. That's me. It's something that is inside of me. In school, I was the only one in class that I was allowed to illustrate and to paint during the classes. It was permitted for me to play and to have things on the table. I was the only one that was allowed to go out from the class without asking permission. I was out. And not because that I was, it just, there was no way to trap me, to hold me behind bars. I, it's not me. And as a person with that kind of nature, no one in the world could convince me to become religious. It was a joke. There's no option to take a person like me and to tell him, no, you must, and you have to... I, I can't hear those, those words. It's, it doesn't penetrate. It doesn't come in. It doesn't click. It doesn't match my character. Never. Tell me what to do. Immediately you, like, no. Okay. Now we can talk. After I told you no, now we can speak if you want. We can speak about why I said no. First of all, no. And then let's talk. I'm stubborn. That's me. Now, to say that someone helped me to do tshuva, yes, situations in life opened my eyes to see and to think, but it was all such an inner process of coming back to my true self, to my nature. That I was just finding power through people's quotes and words and sentences and, and inspiring words to, to find the, the, the way to express what that was already inside of me. I just found myself in the verses. I was just finding myself in the stories from the Bible. In those words from Chachamim that righteous people said thousands of years earlier, I found myself in those holy scripts. And it gave me the ability to believe in myself again. It gave me the understanding that I should count on my inner feelings that yes, there is a source of good that is running this creation and we'll call him God from now on. Before of, it, of that, you could call it anyway. I couldn't care less how you're going to call it. I never, it never bothered me what's his name and what are the obligations and how, how I'm attached to it. I, the hidden world, the world of beyond, mysterious things, always like aroused my thoughts to, okay, what, what's in it? There is something more to it. Yes, I was curious, but I was not obligated. So a person like me and people like you that are also searching for the truth, we are the evidence for the existence of the Creator. Because else there wouldn't be no other way for us all to believe in one thing. And especially if tradition is not the reason why we're following Hashem. It's true that tradition has a very important impact on our tshuva process. Because if not for those holy righteous people that made that way in the camps reading Tehillim and putting Tefillin under horrible, hor horrible governments and horrible decrees and even were ready to die for, for, to make Kiddush Hashem, to make Hashem's name holy. And without those people, we wouldn't have those holy books 
that amazing tradition that will match our nature, that will match the light of our souls. So we would be lost with no knowledge. This is why today we have that obligation to go and spread knowledge as much as we can. To print books and to sell them and to give them out and to give classes and to teach and to talk about it and to, to let people know what they need to do in the mornings, in the noon, all, all kinds of, 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 of teachings are so important and required because people out there don't know almost anything so they must have a lifeline, some connection, something to link to that they will find their way back to themselves. But this is not the reason that we are who that we are. We are who that we are because that's who that Hashem made us to be. And you're a holy soul if you desire holiness. If you want purity, you're a pure soul. If you want good, so you're a good person. And we must fight for that to unlock our true potential. We must fight for that. And the religion is not the cure and answer to your mental problems. Because your mental problems are coming as a result of the fact that you are not allowing yourself to become who that you are. Just to be. But yet when you will let yourself just be and stop following your fears, you will see that you're a righteous man. That you're a righteous woman. That you are a righteous creation. That you're a holy creation. That you're a divine soul that is trapped in a physical world, in a physical body. And that's who that we really are. We are holy people. That's who we are. We are holy. We are amazing and we are fantastic. And we are divine. Because the nature of our creation is built in a way that into the physical body, physical shape that been given to us, the Creator sent a beam of light that is called Neshama Elokit, Chelek Eloka Mimal, part of Him, and He installed that part inside of us, and that's it. You're channeled forever with Him. That's who that you are. That's who you are. And you just need to let that light shine. Shine out through the cracks, from your mouth, through your eyes, through your actions. So for that you must allow yourself to be who you are and just to speak your emotions and your thoughts. And even if you're wrong, you need to find the power to admit, yes, you know what, I was wrong because everyone can make mistakes. Because if you try to look through a blank paper, it's hard to see. And when the light of your soul is trying to see through your eyes, through your body, sometimes it's hard to see. There are many distractions. There are many things that are disturbing our mind and confusing our thoughts and blocking the light of our souls from understanding the complete picture, the whole picture. And we are going lost and confused and don't know what the real answers are and trying to find solutions and answers to our deepest questions and not always finding it. But while searching, if you have that inner desire to find the truth and to seek for it until you'll reach it, until you'll find it, even if you will fail, you're not going to stop. And you're going to learn from the failures and you're going to learn from the obstacles and difficulties Lessons that might be even greater than the lessons that you will learn from the most mm, inspiring experiences that you'll experience in your life. Things that are humbling you, connecting you to reality. Things that pleasure you and satisfy you sometimes won't bring you to the same uh, success, spiritual success of your soul. The soul of Mashiach is the soul of a humble person that doesn't hold any success to himself. This is the soul of Mashiach. The soul of Mashiach will be a person 
that will understand completely, completely, completely that en od milvado, that there is no one except of him. And that will be the center of his thought, that will be his wisdom, that will be his simple understanding, and he will go with that faith all the way. So he will have the ability to illuminate that understanding in the hearts of his followers, of the ones that will listen to him. Who they will be? They will be those people that will have that deep understanding also inside of themselves. Just that they will struggle a little bit more than him. And he will come and his message will be so clear and so simple and so bright that they will catch it and they will understand themselves through his speech. And he will tell them, Pi Hashem diber elechem. It's the mouth of Hashem that is telling you those things. And how can they believe him if he's a real prophet that tells them really only the words of Hashem or maybe he's making up a fantasy, an amazing story. Who knows? Many prophets of lie uh, in, in different generations came and, and drifted huge publics after them straight to hell. So how can you know? You should check the wisdom before you're bringing it into your mind. This is why you receive teeth. You know, we have 32 teeth. 32, numeral value of 32 is Lev. Lev, Lamed Bet, is a heart. Is equal to the word heart, Lev. With those teeth, you are chewing and breaking the food to be something that can be digested, that it will be softer, and you bringing the saliva into it that helps to bring it into your system. And inside, slowly, slowly, you're breaking and breaking and breaking it more and more and more, till it becomes to be part of you. That's the way that your heart is working when you're receiving the wisdom. You need to break it. You need to check it. You need to chew it. And then you will find what that your heart is desire. If that food is good for you, if it's nurturing you, if it's building you, if it's stabilizing you, if it brings you to an inner success or that it's terrifying you and damaging you and you're not allowed to eat from that kind of food anymore. And kosher or not kosher is not enough. Sometimes it can be kosher, but dairy can destroy you. Sometimes it can be kosher, but sugar is bad for your digestion system. It's bad for you as an individual. It's kosher. You have the stamp on it, no doubt. You don't need a stamp on it, okay? It's salt. You don't need stamp on salt. It's kosher, no doubt. It's salt, it's kosher. It's sugar, it's kosher. But it's damaging you. You're not a healthy person and sugar is bad for you. Salt is bad for you. You cannot eat it. So you need to check if it contains salt, if it contains sugar, also in the wisdom. And like we said, the nature of your soul is already good and pure. That's how that Hashem made the world in such a fantastic way that divrei emet nikarim, that you can recognize words of truth because the truth is already installed inside of you from the moment of your creation. By the nature of your creation, He based the truth inside of you in a way that you will always have the ability to match, to check if the information that you received just now fits to your inner truth or contradicts your inner truth. But lazy people or people that chose for themselves to follow their own fears and follow people and follow other people's advice, they will never have the ability, they will never find that great gift that had been given to them by their Creator that gave them the ability to see the truth, good from bad, to find the real truth inside, between the lines, inside the verses, 
in the depths of the wisdom, wisdom that is shining from within. They won't enjoy it because they're leaning on opinions and on methods. And she taught, instead of following their hearts, why they're not following their hearts? Because for years they've been criticized and they've been ashamed and destroyed and their self-esteem today is very, very low and shaky. So they don't feel that they can count on themselves. So they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in themselves. That's for why they cannot see the light of Hashem even if they are religious. Even if they are observant, even if they are keeping all mitzvot, at least that's what they feel, that's what they think. They're waking up and going and praying and they're eating only kosher and they dress like that dress code of Haredi penguins and everything is like me. And they're perfect. From outside everything is perfect. But they cannot find inner happiness. Why? Because they don't have an inner mindset. Because all of their mindset is an external, outside one. They're always looking what other people will think about them. They were always going to consider other people's methods as more important and more stable and stronger than their own. And by that they can lose the spark of their own souls. And the light of their soul will never shine. Because they're not using it. Yeah, I have it in my backyard, in my garage. It's, yeah, I have one. I have a soul. Where is it? What are you doing with it? It's in the cloud. No worries. <laughs> it's on my drive. <laughs> Nonsense. You need to use your soul. You need to understand your soul. This is the hard, the strongest, highest tool you ever received from heaven. You use your hands. Wonderful. What are hands compared to your soul? You use your eyes. You use your ears. You use your heart. Those are physical organs. It's nothing compared to your mind. Compared to your emotions. Compared to your inner soul, the bright light of the Creator that shines from within, you know what you have inside of you, which treasure you have? That you can become in that level like those people, simple people, slaves that just went out of Egypt and the ability that they received from heaven, the gift that they received by the merit of Moses that took them out. They saw prophecies, visions when they crossed the sea that were higher than the prophecies that Yechezkel, the prophet, saw when he was such high-level prophet. And they, those simple slaves, saw Hashem in a higher level, in a higher way, in a clearer way, even than him, than the prophet Yechezkel. How come? Because they were humble. Because they were simple. Because they surrendered to Moses and they followed him with a happy heart and a wishing soul. So all of his treasure, all of his wisdom was available for them. They could enjoy it. They could take buckets on buckets of, of, of his spirituality, of his spiritual success. They could enjoy him. Why? Because they were with him. They were flowing with Him, so they became one with Him. And that was the reason that they could receive finally the Torah in Mount Sinai. Because they were all bonded with love. Ke'ish echad, as one man, with one heart. A happy heart and a wishing soul. A happiness to see the success of your, of your siblings. Happy to see them succeeding, happy to see them buying houses, happy to see them getting married, happy to see them having children, happy to see them buying new cars, happy to see that they have huge amazing swimming pools in their backyards, happy, happy to see them blooming and succeeding and, and, and enjoying life, happy. Happy in the success of their friends, making that success accessible for everyone. Without enjoying something that is not belongs to you. Just by being happy in the success of your friends. Just by following the righteous people without trying to, 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 to carve and to, and to dig 
under them and to become like them and to change what that the order of the world already carved and designed. Be who that you are. Be who you are. Nullify yourself to the nature of your creation. Find satisfaction and happiness in who that Hashem made you to be. And just enjoy your true potential. By trying to imitate and following other people, you will just lose yourself, lose your inner connection to the light of your own soul, to your inner channel that is channeling the endless light of Hashem through you out to the world. And that's it, you're dead. You're blocked your own inner source of happiness and you're an outsider. You live on other people's experiences. You enjoy from physical things all of the time. And, and, and you don't have an inner joy. Because the endless spring of your soul is not accessible for you anymore. Because you're afraid to express your thoughts and your emotions. Because you're not following the voice of your soul. To follow the voice of your soul is not Kabbalistic concept. It's not in heaven. It's not above the sky and not across the sea. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep, to do. You can do that. How? You need to listen to your heart to your thoughts, to your emotions, and you should be honest and to speak only words of truth. Not to chase yourself and blame yourself on things that you haven't done. Not to hate yourself and to destroy yourself on mistakes or failures. Investigate, please. Check a little bit deeper about yourself. Try to understand a little bit more why things happen to you in that way. Why did you found yourself on the ground with your face down? Why you failed in A, in B, in C? Why? Try to ask why. Try to ask yourself why. Not ask others that will tell you it was your fault, it's because of this, because you were sinning, because you were not keeping Shabbos. I was not keeping Shabbos when Hashem opened my eyes to see the importance of Shabbos. When Hashem opened my eyes to understand that Shabbos is a wonderful day, it's a gift that's been given to us by the Almighty, I was violating every Shabbos. I was driving my Jeep or my car or my bike. I was smoking. I was barbecuing on Shabbos. I was watering my garden in Shabbos. And then while I was breaking and violating Shabbos, Hashem revealed Himself to me through those holy messengers that He chose and I'm grateful for them. To open my eyes to understand that Shabbos is amazing, is important. So today I know I should keep Shabbat. Fantastic. But why was I deserve that that knowledge will be revealed to me? Not because the way that I was so observant and strict keeping Shabbos kehil chato. I was not. I was clubbing. I was doing drugs in, in, in pubs. I was driving on, on, on 160 mile an hour in the middle of the night, in the middle of Shabbat, hearing loud music, to the drugs in forest parties, in, in fields parties. What are you talking about? Not because of my holiness Hashem chose me. Just because that my soul belonged to Him. That me and Him are one and the fact that I forgot about it, it's not my fault. And even if it was my fault and I did some sin and I crimed in front of... I don't know what happened back then. And also I couldn't care less. I'm able to say to Hashem, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart and to cry for five hours straight on, on the shame and disgrace of my actions when I'm sinning. And to do complete tshuva and I'm not embarrassed to express my regret and my sorrow from being a sinner. I'm able to come to Hashem because I want to fix. And I'm coming. If now someone tells you you're sick, oh, I'm sick, that's it, you'll go and be insulted? 
I'm sick and I'm happy to be sick and I want to be cured now. So where is the biggest doctor that I can knock on his door? And I'll convince him. And if he will tell me that he's tired, I will knock again. And if he will refuse, I will try to, to give him money to pay to talk to people that knows him. I will do whatever it takes to convince him to heal me. When? When I want to be healed. But when I gave up on myself already, that's it. Depression, black bitterness, sadness, and down the drain. See you in hell. I'll come to rescue, don't worry. It's nonsense. It's only because you gave up on yourself. That's why you say, no, I cannot come back. And you don't know what I've done. And I did this and I did... It's a joke. You think you're, 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 you're exciting someone with your mistakes, with your embarrassing failures. So what? So you sinned, oh no, but you don't know, I was doing this, I made tattoos, I made piercing, I was with that Goya, I was with that Goya, I was masturbating, I was doing... So what? The Zohar Kadosh is saying that everyone can do tshuva and come back to Hashem, and that Hashem is waiting until the last moment that you will come back to Him. Hashem doesn't care. Hashem wants you to get stronger, to stand up back on your feet and start walking. Learn how to walk. Accept on yourself that this is a humbling path of coming back to Hashem. And accept on yourself the shames and the insultings, all kinds of bizionot that we call in the Holy Language busy or not insulting shames accept it so you've been ashamed so someone told you what you don't know to read Hebrew hey you're holding the cedar upside down that's how you prayed Mincha tell him yes I came straight out of Compton what are you talking I came out of hell you're talking to me about holding Sidur you need to be thankful I didn't steal your wallet until now you're crazy talking to me I'm barely surviving. Say thank you that I found myself in the synagogue. People don't understand you, so don't ex expect people to understand you. Follow the light of your faith and start working on your attributes to become a better person and don't give up and don't surrender until you achieve, you know what? What you want to achieve? He wants a house, she wants a house, he wants to get married, they want to have children. You know what are all of those things? All of those things are only plastic. Those things are only physical garbage, waste of this world. Waste, nonsense. Doesn't have no existence in the world that is coming. In the eternal world there is nothing but the truth. Of who were you with shoes, without shoes, with food, without food, with a suit, without a suit. Who were you? Who were you when you were ashamed? Who were you when you got that million dollars? Who were you when you've been destroyed? Who were you when you had the opportunity to build someone? Who were you when you received the mic and the camera? Who were you when you received that villa? Who were you when you left broke with no friends? Who were you when your wife cheated? on you who were you who are you that's what they're gonna ask you in judgment day who are you what's your name and you won't be able to lie you won't be able to say doctor something or lawyer or whatever you won't be able you won't have your your business card to to oh I'm the co-founder of the Amuna project nothing they will tell you you're a liar you're a pathetic liar that's who you are so it's better for you that when they will ask you, who are you, you will have the ability to say, Hi, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I lied to my wife. I lied to myself. I lied to my rabbis. I lied to my parents. I lied to myself all day long. I lied to Hashem. Say the truth. The truth will save you from your fears. The reason that people are afraid is because that they're sinning. Their crimes and their sins are chasing them. For what? For which reason? To wake them up to do tshuva. 
That's why you feel that you're scared. Now, you're scared, you're afraid, you're terrified, you don't know what to do. Stop! And do what? Tshuva! What it means? Come back to Hashem! How you come back to Hashem? Put filin, keep Shabbat! No! No! Those are different obligations. Shabbat, it's Shabbat. Kashrut, it's Kashrut. Tfilin, it's Tfilin. Those are wonderful things that you are all commanded to keep and to do. Wonderful. In your free time, you're more than welcome. But now we're discussing Tshuva. Tshuva is another obligation that stand up by itself. Tshuva, it's Take words with you and come back to Hashem. Come back to Hashem with prayers, with words. First of all, you must express your regret. That's the first step of tshuva. You need to talk to Hashem and to tell Him, Hashem, I messed up. I used my eyes in a wrong way. I used my mind in a wrong way. I used my mouth with a wrong way. I used my hands with a, in a wrong way. And I regret and I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? You need to ask Hashem? No, it's never late. Hashem is waiting for you until you will complete your tshuva. And you need to come and to confess and to apologize. First of all, to the Almighty. And if you hurt a person, you must go to that person and to please him and to satisfy him and to explain to him that you regret and to try to fix between you and him because Hashem cannot forgive you if that person has not forgive you yet. If that person is still upset and he's angry, you have an eternal issue and an eternal problem with that guy, no matter who he is, how poor he is, how lousy he is, how he cannot speak for himself, and how he doesn't have a voice. Even if he is a dog that is upset that you kicked him when he was a puppy, you have a problem. If he is terrified from you, you have a problem. If it's a flower that you just uproot for no reason, you have an eternal problem with that flower. You have a problem. You will have to explain what you just did. Why? Who are you? Who were you when you saw that beautiful flower? You picked it. Why? Tell me why. For my wife? Okay, maybe. Maybe, I listen, I hear you. Maybe you have a reason. Just because you felt like it? Is it a good enough reason to cut the life of a flower? Question. Is it a good enough reason to cut the life of a butterfly? Just because you felt like it? Maybe. He was biting me. Okay, I hear you. It's a reason. Let's see. Maybe you had another choice. Maybe you had another way. So what that I'm recommending is that we're going to judge ourselves before we will be judged in heaven. Before of judgment day, heaven's court, we are obligated to do tshuva. And when you do tshuva, you can have solutions to your problems. Now for an example, you cut that flower. You killed an animal for no reason. You did something horrible. You hurt that person. There are ways to fix. You can pay back for your crimes and for your mistakes. First of all, your tshuva helps a lot. To open your mind and then opportunities will come. Suddenly you will see a flower and you will think maybe I'll water it and you will water that flower and you don't know that the Creator already used His wisdom and His greatness to choose those particles of spirit that were belong to the flower that you uproot when you were just acting silly two weeks ago and to replace the sparks of spirit of that flower that is about to dry right now. And you're gonna water that flower 
And for you, it seems like there is no connection between those two situations. But the Creator, He is thinking His thoughts and preparing the world for a complete redemption and complete fix, Tikkun. And He is making sure that you will have the opportunity to fix. So while you're watering that flower, listening to your inner voice, understanding the message that you see a dying flower here by your side to water it and to take care of it, you will fix what that you damaged two weeks ago when you were acting silly, just kicking that flower for no reason. When you're doing tshuva, the Creator will provide a path under your footsteps and He will bring people and situations will come together and He will make all the combinations to make sure that you will accomplish completion and to fix yourself completely until the last day of our life. He will make sure that we will fix it all if we will walk in an innocent way, listening to the inner voice of our souls because no commandment will tell you to water that flower. No commandment in the world will tell you to go and to take that puppy into your house. No commandment will tell you to go and to have a chat with that person that sits on that bench and just to go and talk to him for half an hour on his life. Only your inner voice will tell you to do those things. Only your emotions, only your senses will catch that person in the side. Only your feelings will be pulled toward that situation over there that will help you to accomplish something that you forgot long, long time ago. Counting on Hashem, it's to count on yourself. Listening to the voice of Hashem, it's to listen to the voice of your soul. It's to work on your inner awareness, to follow the truth. If you feel that you disrespect someone, stop yourself from doing that. If you feel and you notice that you're being hard on someone, hold your horses, hold yourself back, relax, go back and apologize, work on yourself, admit in your mistake, apologize to him. Confess in front of the Creator. Tell Him, please, Father in Heaven, help me to learn to understand how to deal with this situation because I feel like killing. I feel like breaking things all over the place. Heal me. Heal me. Help me to relax. Help me to be that person that I am. Help me to come back to the roots of my soul, to be that good kind, sensitive, loving person that I am in the nature of my creation. Let me coming back to who that I am, to the good soul that I am. And it's our responsibility to let the light of our souls shine. Use the talents and the abilities, the wisdom and the power that the Creator gave you. I have a friend that is about to be kicked out of his house in the next coming up days. That guy is suffering and working to feed his family like, like the most noble person I saw in my life. That person cannot stand in the payments of his rent. He's not able. He's running like crazy. He's not lazy. He barely finds time to learn and to pray. He's running like crazy to take care of his family. Day and night, I can swear to you. That person is sweating and his eyes are tearing and he's doing as much as he can to take care of his family. And almost six months, he didn't pay his rent. And his landlord is a very good person but he also cannot pay for that family for so long and he is and he's not their parents and he's not their uncle and he's just a poor landlord that is stuck with a poor family and they're all struggling and me i don't have the money to pay for his rent and what can i do about it i can pray for him and there was no one day since i heard 
his difficulty from the first time I heard there was no one day that I stopped myself from praying for him and I'm still praying because that's what I can do so I'm doing as much as I can for him if you know on a situation or if you know that you have the ability to help or if you know that you don't have and you can pray so pray for him so pray for her so do as much as you can to save people's life because the Creator is asking you only one question who are you what are you doing with your time what are you doing with your talents? What are you doing with your abilities? What are you doing with your money? What are you doing with your wisdom? What are you doing? How are you spending your life? How do you spend your time? So you should do as much as you can to be a better person, to reveal the kindness of the Creator in the world, to show the world that you are coming from a holy tree of holy souls that are delivering and distributing the light of faith and goodness in the world. Be that one and Hashem will be with you. Thank you very much. May from heaven they will bless us all to always be happy, satisfied, healthy and wealthy, stable and glad. Amen. Can you hear some? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.